person uh, quickly in the tool to get to their actual uh, member profile. So we'll go through an example of that. As far as how this is organized, member search is most likely where you'll, where you'll be doing all of your work. Task management, um, we have a feature in this tool where you can assign a task to an individual or you know, make a note, and those would show up here under task management. So there will be notes that you've assigned to yourself. Um, probably won't be assigning tasks to anyone in the system, but if that were the case, uh, we do have some like health coaches who work in this tool and they can assign tasks to other people. Um, and then under team tasks is where you will see um, any task that has been assigned um, for that group. So right now I'm on this employer group, Big Business. These are all of the, the tasks that have been added uh, for this group. These are all demo based on um, just our team utilizing them. Under the reporting tab, there are a few reports here. The chronic condition report will show you the number of people identified with each of these conditions. Okay. And the good thing about this report is that um, these little magnifying glasses, if you were to click on that, it's going to bring up the, the list of those individuals in the member search page. So I'll click on diabetes as an example. And now that's going to give me the names of all of those individuals. And I can click on their member profile and go find more information about them. Okay. So that report will be, could be helpful for you. Mm-hmm. This tool, we have the ability to place people in different um, groups, or what we call managed member groups. So, for example, obviously we don't have any for big business. Let's switch to AC. So, these are just some that we created here in demo. Um, but we could have like outreach managed member groups or engaged managed member group. Um, some people have set up groups to um, capture all people that have been identified with diabetes or people that have two or more ER visits. The, the options are almost limitless on what we can create from a managed member group standpoint. And that just allows you to have a, a list of people readily available um, that you can use to sort of manage your workflow. Um, we do also have the ability to create a group and not fill it with anyone. Um, so, for instance, I have a health coach who's using this system, and um, we have a, a management member group for her that's a diabetes program. So, as she is engaging people, she can mark them as being in her program um, in this tool. So, it helps her keep track of who she's engaging. So, let me just interrupt you for a second. Is this, yeah. do I, am I able to create groups here? Or are these only groups that have been created by Vital Insight or, you know, for yeah, so, National Salvage? Are there groups that are already created for them? Or how, how does, I'm trying to figure out how I can use it. Sure. Yeah, so, I don't think we have any groups already created for National Salvage outside of, um, we have a, a COVID-19 high-risk managed member group that we created for all of our clients. Mm -hmm. um, we have a set of criteria that flags people as being at risk for complications based on um, you know, all these different things that they could potentially have. So that's, I think that's the only one that's set up right now for National Salvage. Mm -hmm. um, we have to manually create these groups on our end from a technology standpoint, mm -hmm. um, but it could, all you would have to do is, would be to define the criteria to fill that group. Um, so we would kind of work through that together, and then I would pass that on to our IT team to make that group, and then each month we would be filling that on the back end as the data gets refreshed. Okay. Uh, the last report here is an enrollment report, and that just shows uh, member count over time. That may or may not be helpful for you, um, but you can set your time period. Um, and choose you know, what type of coverage, whether it's medical or pharmacy, which is pretty
pretty much what we have for everyone mm -hmm. in this. Um, so that could be helpful. Um, administration, uh, I, we, I believe this tab is actually going away, so we won't talk about that one. Okay. Um, that's not really relevant to our end users. So before I go back to the member search page, I do want to point out that there are a couple tabs here under this question mark. The available data tab will show you uh, for that group what data we have available in our system and when it will um, be refreshed. So next Monday, um, data through May 2020 will be available. Okay. And then here below, you can see for ABC group, We'll show the carrier name, what type of file it is, so if it's medical, RX, census, um, and the minimum and maximum date that we have in the tool. Okay. We also have this contact us section, so if you did have a question, um, this would just be routed to the appropriate person, but you can also just email me if you do have questions while you're working in the tool. Okay. And there is... Uh, under resources, there's a clinical strategy app user guide. Um, the other two are related to another function in this tool called the Query Builder, which you won't have access to, mm -hmm. um, so you won't need those. But this um, user guide here will cover most of the things I'm going to talk about today, uh, but it will just give you an overview of the different sections of the tool. So that could be a great um, resource for you as you're... You know, oh, awesome, yeah. And where is this again? That is under the um, question mark here. Got it. Okay. In the top right hand corner and resources. So I'm going to go back to the clinical tool. Number search. And I think at this point I'm going to switch over to National South, which just so this makes uh, more sense for you. Perfect. Thank you. Pause the screen real quick. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, the member lookup can be used to find an individual. Do of last name. Uh, yeah. And this is not case sensitive, so you can do lowercase, capitals. Okay. Um, and I find anyone that has any part of what you type here in this box in their name. So then that pulls up everyone with the last name of Smith. Uh, so that helps me kind of narrow down. If you do know someone's exact first and last name, you can type all of that in, and it mm -hmm. should narrow down to just that person. Okay. So we'll start with... Um, so if you click on the person's name, it's going to open up their member profile in a new tab. Okay. And there's a lot of information here, so we'll just walk through each section. On the left-hand side, you'll see the demographic information for that person. So their name, date of birth, um, this member ID is a our Vital Insight member ID. Mm -hmm. uh, every member gets their own mm -hmm. ID. Then you'll see their dependent type, the employer name, the National Salvage, and the last eligibility date. So this, we actually had a refresh over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So some groups, we actually have their May data right now. So uh, the latest eligibility date for this person is showing as May 31st, so we could assume that they're still active on the plan. Mm -hmm. And then um, if we have these location IDs or different subgroups defined, then you would see those there. The next section, uh, phone number. We can also um, we can add phone numbers here or change them. So if you know that a cell phone number is better for reaching that person. You could add a cell phone number there for them. Okay. It's automatically saved. Um, the review button, that would really be for your own purposes. Like if you wanted to mark that person as being reviewed um, okay. for some reason. So if you've outreached to them or you've looked at their profile and you want to mark that, you can. 
um, final insight doesn't do anything with that information, so that would just purely be for um, your purposes. Okay. The next section is the managed member groups. So as I mentioned, we have that COVID-19 high-risk population managed group in here. Um, if we have, oh, and then we also have a vital insight and lead list for case management that we have for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you wanted to create additional managed member groups, this is where those would be housed and you could easily mark someone to take them out or put them in a group. Below there, this is where you can add a note or a task. Um, so you just give it a title, you can add all of your details. You can mark how you interact with that person. So is this a public work. note? So anybody that goes in can see it? Um, you can mark it as private. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> I need to let you finish. Sorry. No, you're okay. <laughs> Good question. Yes, yeah, so you could change it to like everyone that has access to this group. So at this point, all of Vital Insight has access to all clients, mm -hmm. um, and no one else outside of Vital Insight has access to National Salvage. So it would just be our internal team that would be able to see that. And I'll let you know, like we don't randomly go through notes uh, very often. So if you want to leave it as you know, visible to everyone, that's fine. But you can also mark it as private if you wanted to. Um, you can also assign two people. So these are vital insight uh, individuals. Um, if you add a due date to it, that will then make it a task. And um, you can change the priority, high priority if you wanted to, and then you can also add attachments. Okay, so if it turns into a, uh, you'll probably show me this later, but do I have a task? Oh, I see the tab over there. Okay, sorry. I'll let you finish. No, you're fine. No, you're, you're fine. So we'll just create like a test note and we'll just say um, outreach. And I will assign it. Actually, yeah, let me assign it to myself just so you can see what this looks like. And then I will give it a due date. I'll just mark today. And I'll add that note or task. So now when I go here to this tab on this side, mm -hmm. we should see that. For that individual and then like I mentioned earlier on this task management under user tasks I should see that get assigned to myself awesome let's go back and I'm actually going to well I can mark it as complete I'm just going to delete this for now so this is just a test now. but you also can edit too So then back to the clinical tab, um, we'll just start here with this primary care uh, box. Here you'll be able to see uh, the provider that that individual is attributed to. Mm -hmm. So what that means is we look at the last 24 months of data and it's the provider that they've seen the most. Okay. Or if they've seen two providers the same number of times, it's going to pull the last provider that they saw. Okay. And you'll see the date of that last visit. And then we'll show the most recent provider, which may or may not be the same as the attributed provider. Right. This group doesn't have an on-site clinic, so that's going to have an end for no. The next section shows total cost, and it breaks out med and RX. And if you toggle over, it'll give you a historical view. So in 2018, we had $811 in RX claims and 87 in medical claims and then you can see where they ended in 2019 and now uh, in the last 12 months. All of this data here is always going to be on a rolling 12-month period. So okay. with data through May, we're looking at June of 2019 to May 2020. Okay. Uh, the next section shows their rub score, which is a resource utilization band. Uh, everyone's given a rub score on a scale from zero to five, and that's based off of their um, utilization of the healthcare system and uh, their risk. So zero would be someone with very little or no information, so we can't put them into a risk category. Mm -hmm. um, a one would be a healthy user. Two is low risk. 
three is moderate, four is high risk, and five is very high risk. Okay. Um, then we'll also show their current and perspective risk. So the current risk is looking at you know the current 12 month period, and this person has a green arrow, so it's lower than what it was last year. The perspective risk is a predictive value um, based on their current utilization, and this person's is a 1.49. It's higher than last year, um, but typically with the perspective risk um, in our reporting, we look for people that have a perspective risk of 16 or higher. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you've ever seen any of our um, population health reports. No, not yet. Uh, okay. In that report, we show um, like a, a high cost claimants and then those that have a perspective risk of 16 or higher and we provide their member ID uh, and their top contributing condition and cost and some other things. Um, so that member ID could be used then to search in the tool to actually find that person. Uh, the next section is clinical alerts. So if someone has um, high risk of hospitalization, if they're on an expensive medication that we flagged for clinical alerts, or if they have a diagnosis that we flagged, that will be displayed here. Um, program participation, we are pulling in those that are engaged in your program. So if they're engaged, they should, it should show up here okay. in that file. And then in the utilization tile, we're showing number of active ingredients, number of ER visits, number of inpatient admissions, and outpatient visits. What do you mean active ingredients? In the medications? So, yeah. So I could be on a medication that has um, two active ingredients in it. So while it's one med, there are two ingredients in it that are working to impact whatever condition I have. Oh, interesting. So you don't go by how many medications, you go by how many active ingredients. Yes. Huh, okay. So uh, in our report, we look for people with 12 or more active ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, that could be, you know, just a few medications, but when you have all those ingredients working together, you know, there could be risk of some polypharmacy issues. Right, yes. I like that, okay. Any other questions on this section? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right, the next table um, is our preventive care table. And here we're looking at compliance with annual long exam, um, A1C testing if they're diabetic, flu shot, cervical cancer screening, blood uh, mammograms. So if they are compliant, there'll be a green check mark here, and the date of compliance will be listed. Okay. So this person is not compliant. Correct. Okay. The next section um, will show all the conditions this person has been identified with and um, how we are identifying those. So we can look at high impact conditions medium impact. So this is based on medications that they're currently taking? So this is going to be based off of um, medical claims and Rx. So the category column will tell you where that is being flagged. Okay. So well, there's medical diagnosis, pharmacy, uh, and you can, all, you can filter this down to just look for medical or just look for pharmacy or both. Shouldn't those correlate? I mean, if you have a medical diagnosis, shouldn't that also, would you also have a pharmacy diagnostic? Not all the time. Not no. always, okay. And then below there, the next section is, so this is, sorry, this is based off of claims. I mean, all of it's based off of claims, but this is going to look for specific, like, diagnosis categories. Johns Hopkins, the risk indexing system that we use, um, then we'll flag people with chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, so like this person has been flagged as having persistent asthma, depression, and COPD. Mm -hmm. And the way that's being identified for this individual is through their prescription claims. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll see it's just medical claims only, or sometimes it could be both medical and RX claims. Okay. 
then if they're on medication, um, you'll see that there, and then number of refill gaps. So um, I'll find an example here in just a minute, but we'll keep looking through this one. Um, next section will show the top uh, medications through the PBM, either by cost or by count. So you can choose how you want to look at that. And then if you toggle over, you'll be able to see when that medication was last filled, the day supply, quantity, and what the plan paid amount was. So at any any of these columns, if you toggle over, you'll get the historical information for that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. So you can see how many times they filled this drug here. And this data can be exported to Excel. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to give you a full um, like a claims history for that individual. So the first page is just their demographics. So on the second page, you'll see all of the RX claims for that individual. So we have back to 2018 for this person. Mm -hmm. So everything that they've filled is here. Uh, the next section is medical claims, and you can look at that by cost or by count, and this can be exported as well. You get another Excel file, and this has all of their medical claims. Well, this person actually doesn't have a lot of history. And then at the bottom, if we have biometric data for that individual, those values would be displayed here. And we are adding a manual bio biometric entry feature. Our team was just testing it last week. Um, so that will allow end users to actually add in biometric values um, for people as they meet with them. We have a lot of health coaches that, that utilize this tool. Right. And, um, you know, if someone is, you know, they're just getting a physical once a year, but then they're meeting with the health coach and getting their blood pressure checked or their weight, we would have no way to have that information um, right. unless it was coming through like a file. So having that manual entry as an option, is, I think it's going to really enhance the tool. So any questions on the member profile? No, no, not okay. yet. Thank you. So I'm going to go back to the member search page. Uh, so I showed you, you know, you can look for people by their first name, last name, or vital insight member ID, and it should pull them up. Um, we also looked at that chronic condition report that allows you to get to a list of people or export all members. Um, I'll show you what that looks like here. That would give you That will give you um, just the list of names, address, date of birth, um, okay. dependent status. I believe where that comes in handy is if you're doing um, an advanced search in this tool. So I don't know if you can see this little section here. It's called advanced. Mm -hmm. If I click on that, it brings up um, a search, a search section. So our default criteria for this section is looking at the latest risk period and current med enrollees, so people that are currently enrolled on the plan. If I didn't do anything else and just searched, that's going to pull everyone that's currently on the plan that has a risk profile in the last 12 months. So I get 572 people. Now that's not ideal for a lot of people. Um, but let's say you're interested in a subset of that population. Let's say diabetics. You can add a rule here, and it brings up another box. You click on that. That allows you to add additional criteria to narrow down um, your search. So this is organized into several different tables. Mm -hmm. So there's an eligibility table. So that's going to contain like your basic demographic information. Uh, and then we get into our risk table, which uh, has a lot of different 
columns that are available to us. Uh, but that's where we would find like our chronic conditions, um, ER, ER visit count, inpatient visit count, uh, medication gaps. So all of that would be housed in our risk table. Um, after that, I'm just going to scroll pretty quickly and I'll show you a, a better way to do this. But we have a medical table, so non-RX claims. And then there's RX table, uh, a wellness table, so to look for people with biometrics. And then we get down into some other things. You can look for people with notes, uh, different appointment types, and then the very end, our preventive care table. So those are a lot of things to scroll through, but we do have a search bar here. So if I wanted to look for diabetes, I would just start typing diabetes. And I'm going to use the diabetes clinical. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned earlier, through Johns Hopkins, we can identify people with chronic conditions um, several ways. So it could be through both medical and pharmacy claims. It could just be through medical claims only. It could be through prescription claims only, or that person could be, there could be a medical claim, pharmacy claim, and they could be being like actively treated with medication. So if I were to just select both or one of these, you may not pull everyone with diabetes. So in order to get everyone with that condition, I'm going to say not equal to NP, and NP means not present. So it's like a double negative okay. to weed out those people that don't have the condition, essentially. Okay. Uh, so now I can search, and this should find everyone that's been identified with diabetes in the last 12 months. So that narrows my list down to 49 people. Uh, so if we did have... Um, like a managed member group, you could add all members to you know that group if it was available. What does the um, managed mean? I'm sorry. What does the managed mean? That managed. Well, what yeah. does that mean? So these these individuals are um, in that COVID managed member group mm -hmm. um, because one of the criteria is diabetes. Mm -hmm. So all these individuals are going to be marked as managed. Okay. That's all that's indicating is that that person is in a managed member group. Okay. Got it. Uh, let's say this is something that you wanted, you knew you wanted to search for every time you got into the tool. You do have the ability to save this as a search. That way you don't have to go back in and recreate this. Oh, good. Uh, save criteria, so gonna, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so save criteria. You can name it. You know, diabetic or diabetics, however you want to call it. Okay. And then if you um, select this add to quick search, mm -hmm. this is going to save this search in two different places. So one place will be here in the save criteria section, but it's also going to save it to a quick search. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I just press save. Uh, so now it shows up in my save criteria here on the right hand side. These are all the different searches that I've saved in the tool. Uh, but also it's going to save it here to the quick searches. And the nice thing about this quick search section is that it's just a one button search feature. Um, so I'll show you one that I have here saved. I'm going to do two or more ER visits. So if I click on that, it automatically starts doing that search for me. I don't have to go through the process of bringing down that advanced section and doing that search. Okay. So that's given me 10 people that have two or more ER visits. And if I drop them down my advanced section, I can see where it populated that criteria for me, but I didn't have to go through the process of, of doing that. Okay. So there are a lot of different things that we could search for in this tool. Um, and the nice thing too is that our team can create these searches for you so that way you don't have to do them on your own. Um, this criteria can be exported and it basically creates a, a text file. If you open it up, it really, it means nothing, you know, to, to the user in this format. But if I were to save this file on my computer somewhere, I could then um, import it. So I 
think I have a few saved. Let me, um, let me pull those up really quick. I'm just trying to get to the right place. Okay, so when I click on the choose file, it brings up this criteria box. So I'll click on choose file and I'll go to where I have it saved. So then I would just select that um, test file or you know template, and I'll press open, and then I will upload. So then it populates that criteria for me. So in this example, we were looking for people that were taking the drug Humira. Mm -hmm. So if I were to search, it should pull up anyone that's been taking that medication in the last 90 days, which in this group, there's no one. Um, Hooray. So that's, just an, <laughs> <laughs> that's just an example of how, you know, we could create some searches for you. You save them onto your computer, and then you could upload those and then you know, save them as a search here. Okay. I can save that as like an RX search. And that's one that I wouldn't necessarily want in my quick searches because I could, you know, potentially change out this drug name. Right. Um, so I would just want that to be saved here in my safe criteria. Okay. Um, for now I have that saved here for future requests. So before I go on, I just wanted to kind of get your feedback on, you know, as you're seeing this information, what are ways that you think you could potentially use it? Um, and maybe we could talk through, you know, creating some searches for you or some managed member groups. Uh, kind of want to get some initial thoughts on what you're thinking. Yeah, um, thank you for asking. I think, I think our major thing is going to be, um, you know, medications like the uh, like the biologics, um, those ending in mob mostly, um, autoimmune conditions, um, diabetes, heart disease, um, digestive issues. So those are our major issues that we work with. Um, so, but I think, you know, the whole idea of connecting us to the tool is really being able to connect to the people that are suffering from chronic disease that are not in the program, um, in our program, so that we can, you know, kind of get to know the population that we don't know yet and see how we can target, um, get them the resources that they need so that they can improve their health or, you know, try to, try to find ways to um, interest them in our program. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. So I think for you then, like having that diabetes search would be helpful. Yeah. Probably one for hypertension. Yep. Yeah. Um, Autoimmune like conditions. Issues. Yeah, so like using this one would be good. Um, trying to think of other, other things. Depression, anxiety, um, yeah. all of those things. Depression. Yeah, depression is a condition that Johns Hopkins will flag, so we can look for that as well. Now, when you, I guess when you think about from a time standpoint, would it make sense for us to create managed member groups, at least for like the chronic conditions? 
So that way you're not having to manually go in and create all these searches. It's just um, we create the group. It's filled every month with people who have been identified with, you know, diabetes or hypertension or depression. Uh, that way you have that list, like, handy. Yeah, and that would, be, yeah, that that would be very helpful. Always mm -hmm. do. Okay. And are you just targeting employees or is it spouses and dependents as well? Just employees right now. Oh, okay. but you know what? It would be helpful to to know what the spouse is and dependents um, because we would really like to extend the program at some point. So I think that would be valuable information, mm -hmm. um, but not something we're actively working with. Okay. So I, I, I think it would be helpful to have them both, but not mixed together if that makes sense sure yeah so like we could do um like the managed member group so if you're actually going to be targeting we could set those for our employees but then you can always um you can always search for spouses that have those conditions as well so mm -hmm. like on this um chronic condition report that we looked at mm -hmm. You can use that as like a starting point. So let's just go with uh, let's do hypertension and stuff. So whenever I click on that list, it's going to always give me here this advanced criteria. You can add a rule, a rule, excuse me, and look for dependent code. And then you can change this to just spouses search and that will narrow that list down to just spouses identified with hypertension. So you have 32 people. Okay. And where am I where am I finding the spouses again? I'm sorry, I'm just looking for where that's yeah. Um, it's eligibility. There we code. are. Okay, perfect. Got it. And then employee, spouse, child, or other. Okay. What should we do? Um, just making some notes here on the management for groups. Okay. So we'll do one for diabetic employees. Depression and I can send you the um, the search the search criteria for this medication one. Okay, uh, that would be helpful. Now I know some of the inflammatory drugs. They're injectables. They might actually be going through the medical plan. Uh -huh. um, and the way we typically identify those is with the J code. And I don't. So I could give you a search for that, but I it's kind of hard to do that like by the name because we don't always get the name of the medication, but we do get the the J code for it to find it in the medical claims. Like I know, with Lixamab is J one seven four five. That's one that shows up a lot. Um, for you know, a lot of our clients, so I know that one like off top, but I don't know if that would be helpful for you or not. Yeah, that would definitely. conditions. I know you said digestive issues. Some of those Johns Hopkins doesn't like categorize. Um, so that would be How about GERD? One. Yeah, uh, let me actually go back. GERD is pretty popular. I 
think the best way that we could look for that is through um, we have a so we categorize um, diagnoses into what we call EDCs or expanded diagnosis categories mm-hmm. uh, or major expanded diagnosis categories. So in this MEDC description, we could look for um, like gastrointestinal hepatic or could get more granular and do the EDC, which then you could look for um, uh, esophageal yeah, reflux, esophageal yeah, and, and reflux, yeah. Uh, so we look for that. that's going to give anyone that's had a claim with that diagnosis category attached to it in the last 12 Mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. And like that, like I said, this EDC can be changed out to be whatever. So like if you were looking for anxiety, um, I know that's one that, so there's anxiety, um, yeah, this list is just, it's really long, so you can find a lot of things in here. Uh, so I can see. Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's a lot of information here that I feel like would be really useful for you all. Yeah. Are you, are you doing anything a lot with ER use at all? Um, yes, we are. I mean, it's all, it's all helpful information. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but we don't, we don't really present on that often. Okay. But I see that you can just pop it in there. So it looks like we can just go in and play with the system. And Yeah, really, it does take a lot of, um, playing around to kind of figure out like how you think you might use the tool and what you need and then right. this is always refined as we go along if you feel like you aren't quite getting to what you need that's certain we can have a conversation and could easily set up a search or create another management for group uh, to meet those needs okay uh, do you have any further questions no I mean it all seems pretty um, easy to use just a lot of information so I think it's just going to take some playing around in the system and sure. then I'm sure I'll have questions and um, oh, yeah. I can email you with them yeah that's perfectly fine uh, so I will I'll have our team at least start with creating the three management book groups for diabetes hypertension and depression that way those are in there for you. Uh, I don't know if you would prefer to have like a, like a managed member group that we don't fill with anything that's maybe like a engaged or uh, something along those lines. That way you can mark people as you are talking to them. If that's of any interest to you. Or if you want yeah, to that, that would be it. helpful. Yep. Okay. That'd be great. Uh, is it okay if I just call it like HRP engaged? Yes. Uh, it's not too long. That'd be fine, yeah. Okay. And we'll leave that one empty. That way, as you're engaging with people, you can mark them as engaged. Okay. Any other questions that you have? No. All right. Uh, well, I'll work on this. Um, I'll let our team know that. We did our training. Your credential should be sent out. If not today, then tomorrow. Um, so you'll have those, and you'll be able to log in and start playing around with you. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Sierra. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for being flexible, too. I really didn't hate it to, like, cancel last minute. Um, oh, last no week. worries. I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, okay, good. Well, I'll be waiting for the credentials, and then I'll hop in there. If I have any questions, I'm sure you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank Thank you you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.